Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm Cisco CCNA CCMP and Palo Alto Certified Instructor. On this video, we are covering PCN SA 210. And this is Chapter 2, Initial Device Configuration. Now, this is a second video of that chapter, Video 2.2, Initial System Access. Reset to factory configuration. So for some reason, if you want to reset your device or your Palo Alto network firewall to factory reset, then there's two ways. If you know the username, uh, if you know the password of the admin, admin account, then you can just log on in there. And then on the user mode, you can say request system private data reset, which you can see the command there. That's the command. And that will reset the firewall to the fa factory default. And that's what I did here. I logged in my admin. I knew my password. I logged in. And then I set up the command request system private data reset. And the tab works here. Yeah. So you just type REQ -E and hit the tab and then SYS hit the tab and then PR hit the tab and it will fill it, fill it for you. And then it will give you like a warning message and ask you whether you want to set up or not. Then you click Y and then it will reset it. If for some reason you don't know the admin administrator password, then the first thing you need to do is put uh, the firewall into maintenance mode. So after the firewall boots up, starts booting, you type maint in the command line interface uh, through the console port. And after the after some time, you can choose to reset it to default to factory default. Management interface configuration web interface. Now, if you for some reason you want to change the IP address of the device that you want to manage or your firewall that you want to manage, by default, these firewalls, they come with IP address, um, not that, they come with 192.168.1.1. That's the default firewall, not the, the uh, default gateway either. So Netmask is, is the same. But if you want to change it, which I did in this case, we can go there. Okay, I'm going to show you how I did it. So I go to my firewall. And you need to access device. So device, functional category tab, go to setup, and then go to interfaces. And there's already a management interface. That's it. You can't add another one or anything like that. That's it. If you want to edit it, you just highlight. You can see there's like a hyper hyperlink. You highlight, select it, and click on it. By default, now a physical firewall, the IP address of the physical firewall would have been 192.168.1.1. 192.168.1.1. I have changed it here to this address. Subnet mask is the same. And I put the gateway as well. Now, you in here, you can actually uh, configure how or, or what administrative management services are allowed on this firewall. See, by default, we allow HTTPS and SSH, secure, se secure shell and HTTPS. But we can allow it through um, unsecure HTTP and Telnet if you want. But they are not allowed by default. By default. And then you can allow what network services you're allowed. By default, ping is allowed. You can ping the device, but you can enable other stuff as well. Here you can control who can connect to this firewall. So for example, like create an, like a static list, who is configured, who is allowed to connect to this firewall. By default, you have all of them. But if you select here, you can put the IP address of your device, or you can just put the IP address of your network. So it can be a network. So we can say 192. For example, you can say 192.168.1.0 forward slash 24. That means that only those addresses are available from that network are available to connect to this IP address. If you don't do that, it's just going to connect. Everyone can connect through it. If you want your firewall, and usually this is the default for the virtual machines, to get a DHCP. It's a DHCP client, and it's going to get information through DHCP. The next thing we need to talk about is a configure general settings. 
i.e. for example you want to change the name you want to configure a banner or something like that then we need to go to the same place device functional category tab setup and then we go to management and when we have the management this is your configuration here what we need to do if you want to make changes you need to click on this like a gear icon here and then that will open this the general settings if you want to configure the panorama settings you configure this and it goes on like that right so that's what we're going to do we're going to configure the general settings of this palo alto network firewall so if i click on it here i can change the name the host name i can change the domain name as i have now those two accept dhcp server provided host name and accept dhcp server provided domain name are grayed out and you're not i'm not able to tick them the reason i'm not able to tick them is because you have configured the ip address to be static if you configure the ip address to be dynamic or through DHCP, then those two are available. Then you can configure the banner that is going to appear. Then obviously the time zone and um, the language, the date, the time, and so on. The latitude and longitude, these are used to place the firewall on the map, on the ACC tab. You can have, for example, SSL TLS service profile. You can enable it here if, you, if the communication between the client and this firewall will be encrypted. But I haven't got anything there yet. We will in the future, but at the moment I don't have any. Automatically acquire commit log. Again, later on we're gonna be talking about all this stuff here. So I'm gonna cancel there for a second. Now, if you wanna configure, for example, this, com this firewall to communicate with the DNS server, then again, we have to click device, setup, and then services. In here, we have services from for DNS server and services for an NTP server. So again, on the services, I have to click the tab, uh, the gear icon here, and I can change my DNS server. In here, what we have later on, we're going to come back here again, but we can have an update server. Where 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 is our update? Palo Alto updates. Where do we get them? And the default is update dot paloaltonetworks.com and here we will add EU EU if because we are in Europe we are not in America so I would put later on again we can talk about this so EU when we talk about the updates but here I want to talk about the DNS server the DNS settings so we have a primary secondary DNS server minimum FQN, FQDN refresh time and the stale time so that's a, that's how you configure the, your DNS DNS the primary and secondary DNS DNS server. If you do want to configure the NTP server, so you click on this, and then you can configure the NTP server. So where are you going to get the time from? NTP server's address, and do if you have any authentication, for example, enabled. Same. That's your primary NTP server and the secondary NTP server. Remember, NTP was UDP, port one two three, and if you enable like for example here authentication type you can enable like the key authentication now by default uh, management interface this interface it will go and get all communicate to other external servers for example the update server we're going to use the management interface the DNS server is going we're going to use the management interface NTP server and so on but for some reason, and ma mainly most of the people are not very, very um, happy with that. Like, for example, you can actually configure the one of the physical interfaces to go out and to communicate to the um, external service, not leave the management server. And for that, we have to go, for example, if you want to change that, you have to go to device, setup, services, and same as when, where we were configuring the IP for the DNS server and the NTP server is a service root configuration. A service root configuration, see, it says use management interface for all services, like the update server, NTP, DNS, and so on. But if you don't want to do it, for example, we can customize it. We can say, okay, well, no, we want to use some, some interface, some physical interface. 
and you can see all these services by default what the management interface will be using and um, some people are not happy with this so for example the NTP server I can say NTP server here I can click on it and that will open another window and here I can configure the source IP address and source interface what interface I'm using I'm sorry what interface I'm using for example and what is the IP address of that interface if I choose the source interface for example that will be Ethernet 1.1 and that's my source address IP address it will populate it automatically so for the NTP server I'm using in-band interface okay So that's it for this demonstration. So we go back to the slides again. For example, the IP address, we had to click device, we had to click setup, and then interfaces, and then click on the hyperlink and it will open this window. And that will open, then you can configure the static IP address to something that you want. Then if you want to configure, for example, say the change of name of the firewall, the main name, or the banner, and the time, latitude, longitude, device, setup in general settings we click the gear icon here and that opens this window and then from it there we can configure once we happy click OK and then we have to make sure that we commit them for the changes to take effect the next thing if we want to configure for example the DNS server change it the DNS IP address device setup services and then the gear icon and then down here we have the DNS stuff. If you want to configure the NTP, we click on the NTP tab, which is going to be the next slide anyway. But it's the same place, so device, setup, services, the gear icon, and then the NTP tab, and then we put the NTP IP address. Like I said to you, in the service routes, by default, the firewall will use the management interface to access remote DNS servers, content update services, license retrieval services, and NTP services, and all, all other external services. If you do not want to enable network external network access to your management network, you must set up an inbound data to provide access to required external services, and set up a service route to instruct the firewall which port to use to access the server external services. So how we did that was, I went to device, same place, device, setup, and then services. And then down here, we have a service root configuration. And then we, cho we chose, was the default was the management, we chose customize, and then we can click what service we want to use and what interfaces we want to use for that service. If you want to change IP address of the firewall manually through the command line interface, you, ha you can do it uh, through the CLI using this command. So first you have to log on through the command line interface. So log on, you put the password, type configure to move to configuration mode. And we can see that's our configuration mode. And then we say set device config, system IP address, and then the IP address that you want to change it to, net mask, and then put the subnet mask, the default gateway, and DNS server primary settings, if you wouldn't do it through the command line. Thank you for watching lesson 2.2, Initial System Access of Chapter 2, Initial Device Configuration. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici and bye-bye.